I want to welcome you to this worship service in the name of Jesus Christ. It's a wonderful day to be in the house of the Lord. My name is Eric Lanier. I'm the assistant pastor of Memorial United Methodist Church in Charlotte, North Carolina. And I am so grateful that you have decided to join us this morning. Thank you for supporting the church during this time while our offices are closed. Thank you for your prayers and your online presence and your offerings. We ask that you continue supporting the church with your offerings and tithes and send them directly to the church office or use the online portal on the conference website. And now let us continue this time of worship.
I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now let us go to the Lord in prayer. Diane Carruth sent all uh, members a prayer list, and we want to use this list this morning to pray for all who are sick and hurting in some way and in need of our prayers. Let us pray. Dear God, you have blessed us with gifts of your love and your mercy and your grace. Because of these blessings, we can know you. Because of these blessings, we can have salvation. Because of these blessings, we can have hope for the future. But we often turn our backs on these blessings, especially during times of trouble. And where we should be a reflection of your love and mercy and grace, we reflect the attitude of the world. When we should show love, we show hate. When we should show mercy, we show heartlessness. When we should show grace, we show condemnation. Lord, we are wealthy in your blessings, but your blessings are not ours to hoard. They're not ours to hide. We are called to share them with others, especially with the least and the last and the lost and the oppressed. We pray today for this divided world, for this community that is hurting, a community that is in such need for Christians to stand up and offer love, to stand up and offer peace, to stand up and offer a healing hand, even if it's rejected. Lord, we pray for all who, those who are hurting and in need today. Give them comfort and confidence in your presence. We pray for those who protest that their voices will be heard. We pray for all who are watching these events unfold. Give them calm and may their voices be heard. We pray for the police officers who are responsible for the safety of those on the streets and, in, and for those in their homes. Keep them safe and may their voices be heard. We pray for the leaders as they deal with these complex issues. Give them wisdom and may their voices be heard. Above all, we pray for your peace, Lord, a peace that surpasses all human understanding. We pray for your love to shine forth. Calm the voices of hate and anger that are everywhere present, that are in our neighborhoods, that are in the streets, that are even in our places of worship. Lord, as your servants, as your followers, as a people of faith, we are a wealthy people. Help us to reach out to those in need, to show the love and peace of God to the world. Now, dear Jesus, lead us in your prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. The scripture for today's sermon comes from the book of Exodus, chapter 14, verses 10 through 28. As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back, and there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us, bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the very thing we told you in Egypt? Let us alone and let us serve the Egyptians? For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. 
But Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to keep still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. But you lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the Israelites may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and his chariot drivers. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gained the glory for myself over the Pharaoh, his chariots and his chariot drivers. The angel of the Lord, who was going before the Israelites, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall around them. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of the Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, Let us flee from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for, for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to the normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers, the entire army of the Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. This is the word, word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. The Lord of hosts will do battle for us. Behold his mighty hand. If we were in charge of the universe instead of God, what would things look like? You know what? We would probably put more vitamins in ice cream and candy than in spinach. We would uh, probably put less calories in hamburgers and fries than are in salad. We would probably structure the universe so that we would burn more calories in front of the TV than on the treadmill. We tend to want things easy. And when they are hard, we ask why. Many people are asking why now, during this time of pandemic and social unrest. We may be asking questions like, why is this happening? Why can't things be different? Why is this happening to me? Why is this happening to this person over here that I love? What are these things? Uh, why are these people doing those things? Why did I listen to that person? Why, why do I have to stay so far apart? 
when I'm talking to a person? Why do I have to wear a mask? Why is that business still closed? Why can't things go back to the way they were? There are no easy answers. But I know one thing for sure. Throughout the Bible, God used times like these to teach and instruct and to strengthen people in their faith. In the scripture today, the Israelites are fleeing from Egypt. They have been slaves in Egypt for 400 years. They yearned to be free, and they had cried out to God, pleading with God to give them their freedom. And God heard their cry. God sent them Moses and Aaron, and through them they spoke to the Pharaoh, and through them he performed miracles and frightened the Egyptians and their ruler so that the Pharaoh released them from their bondage. But the Israelites, were they willing to undergo the trials and suffering that was required to be free? This is what they had not counted. This is what they had not factored in. In the verses that I read, we find the first hint that they are not ready mentally and emotionally and probably physically to be free. They reached the Red Sea, but behind them was the Pharaoh's army. They saw chariots by the hundreds and foot soldiers by the thousands, and their weapons were gleaming in the sun. The thunder of their approach probably shook the ground, and the Jews began to shake in fear. They were not soldiers. They were not warriors. They were, had been slaves for 400 years. They had made bricks and done odd, odd jobs for the Egyptians. They had no weapons. They feared that they would be slaughtered. They looked for someone that they could blame their predicament on. And of course, it was Moses. Moses was the reason they were out there. Moses was the one they should blame. They said to him, what have you done to us, bringing us out of Egypt? Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you took us away out here to die in the wilderness? Did we not tell you, Moses, to leave us alone and let us serve the Egyptians when we were in Egypt? It would have been better, they said, to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. Here's what Moses told them. Don't be afraid. Stand firm. Watch the Lord accomplish your deliverance. In other words, God is going to act. And all you have to do is stand still. And the Lord did act. And the Jews were delivered from Egypt. And we read further on in Scripture, further on in the book of Exodus. We read throughout their journey to the promised land that the Jews frequently complained that Moses brought them out in the wilderness so that they would die. Even the parting of the Red Sea didn't lift their confidence to the point where they knew that God was with them, that God was leading them, even though they could see the cloud following them and leading them during the day and the, and the, and the fire at night. They could actually see proof of God with them in the wilderness and they still lacked confidence and still blamed Moses throughout their journey. They had these doubts because things were hard. They wanted an easy journey. They were in a desolate place where things were hard, even for one person. And if you remember, there were 600,000 of them out in the wilderness in a place where one person has trouble feeding themselves and finding water. 
And now there were 600,000 of them out there. They were afraid. Things were hard. And they yearned for something familiar and safe. They yearned for yesterday. They yearned for their houses in Egypt. It didn't matter that they could see God leading them. It didn't matter that they could see that, 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 that God had worked great miracles for them. They were consumed by their fear. They were consumed by their mental, emotional, material, and physical needs. In an article I read some years ago, the writer of the article asked this question. If we had an acute awareness every day of God's presence, how would it affect the way we live and act and feel? She said, we might be more inclined to laugh. We might be more inclined to take some matters less seriously because we could see them from God's perspective. We might be more inclined to cry for the outcast, the wounded and the poor. We might be more prone to open our homes and our hearts to the needy. We might be more prone to find ways to make our communities a better place. And so we say everything might be different today if only God were here with us now and working miracles and acting. But you know what? God is here. Whether we are aware of God or not, whether we can see God's presence or not, God is with us, leading us, guiding us, directing us through the wilderness, through this pandemic. This is astounding when you think about it, God's presence. The same God that created the universe is with us now. The same God that spoke to Moses is with us. The same God that delivered the Jews from Egypt is with us. The same God that spoke to the prophet Samuel is with us. The same God that chose David as king of Israel is with us. The same God that sent his son into the world to live with us, to walk with us, to die for us, is with us. But most of the time, we don't think about it. And sometimes we even hope God is not with us when we act or speak in certain ways. But despite our many faults, despite our sins, despite our resistance to his presence, and most astounding of all, God loves us. Reading the story of the Exodus, we can see that God was using the wilderness experience of the Jews to build them into a nation, to lead them and guide them and instruct them and give them everything that they would need when they got to the promised land to become a nation. Right now, this very same God that led the Israelites, this very same God is using this wilderness time that we are in, this pandemic, to mold us and shape us for his purpose. So this pandemic presents us with a choice. Will you allow God to work his will in you? Or will you complain every step of the way? Will you allow God's love and compassion to reach out into the wilderness through you? Or will you be caught up in your own needs, in your own desires that are not being met by this pandemic? so that you are too angry to feel God's presence or to hear God's voice. During the Exodus, 
God was with the Israelites, yet it seems that they could not grasp this. They could not see the evidence of him or feel his presence, even though he was right there guiding them, leading them through the wilderness. So let us learn from that. Let us never forget it, that God is with us, speaking to us, shaping us, molding us, using us, even in this wilderness time. Amen. As we move forward, let us never forget that God is with us. God is with us even in this wilderness time. Amen. <laughs>